Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Coffee in a Card. My name is Leslie Benson. I'm the founder of the Plaid Poodle Paper Crafting Company. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I try to come on here live every Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. and just share some uh, fun projects with you. Today's project, um, make sure if you're here that you say hello because I like to send my cards out or my projects out to um, the viewers, anybody who views, so I, I, I need to know you're here. I can put your name in the hat to um, send that card to. If you don't make any comments, I, I don't know you're here. I can see there's viewers, but I can't see um, your name. Hi, Susan, and hi, Kathy. So nice to see you girls. Um, the host code for September is up there. I haven't shown the um, what, we'll, what we'll draw for yet, and I meant to grab that before I got started, but I will show that on Monday. But if you place an order with me during the month of September and use that code, your name will go into a drawing for a really fun um, stamp set or bundle. Um, and if you don't win the stamp set or bundle, I do um, send out a small thank you gift to people who use that host code up there. <laughs> um, and I'm getting ready to mail the um, August thank you gifts this week. In fact, I'm making them and putting a little treat inside them to get in the mail. Okay, let's get started. The card today, we're going to be using a bundle from the holiday catalog. And let me put the camera down. Here we go. It's Celebration Tidings Bundle, and when you purchase the stamp set and the dies together, you save 10%. Let me find what page that is on in the uh, holiday catalog or mini. I call it the holiday mini. Okay, it is on page 58. Uh, the the dies come with one, two, three, four, five nice label dies, a couple of spider dies, a couple heart dies, um, some greenery sprigs, and little corners. So it's kind of a, this is a really nice um, workhorse die set, I would say, even if you don't get the, the coordinating stamp set. Um, because I'll use these labels for a lot of different things. The card, I'm trying a little different setup today, so if I feel awkward, that's why. If it seems awkward, that's why. Hi, Joy. Oh, you're welcome. Everybody got their cards. In fact, I sent one to Connecticut, and she got it yesterday too which really surprised me that I went all the way to Connecticut that fast this is the little card we're gonna make it's a square card and I wanted to really focus on this pretty gilded autumn designer series paper I decided the size of the card based on the size of my square envelope you could make this card you could you could pare it down and make it a four and a fourth by four and a fourth square card and just use a smaller one of the dies and it would fit in a standard envelope but I had some square envelopes so I went ahead and made mine bigger um, this one measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters so you would want to take nine and a half inch piece by four and three quarters piece of this is early espresso is what I'm using and then I went ahead and cut out the largest die this this one here from this pretty mint macaron and gold leaf 
um, paper. I love the Gilded Autumn paper. It's gorge, as they say. <laughs> so I just took my um, card base, and like I said, it's nine and a half by four and three quarters, and then I, I scored it at four and three quarters, folded it in half to make the card base. And like I said, if you wanted it to be smaller to fit in a um, regular A2 envelope, you could make it four and a fourth. So you'd want eight and a half by four and a fourth. Then you could get two cards out of one piece of eight and a half by 11 uh, cardstock. And then just use a smaller, I think the second one might be two. No, you could use, instead of the largest die, you could use the, um, the second largest die and just make it smaller if that makes sense. Then you could get it in a regular envelope. You wouldn't need a special square envelope, but I had them, so I went ahead and used them. So I just am going to adhere this right onto the card front. I'm going to use some liquid glue. But before I do that, I'm going to add a little of this ribbon on each side, about five, four or five inches on each side. And this is the Basket Weave Metallic Ribbon Combo. I'm not using the metallic ribbon this time. I'm using the Basket Weave, and it's a real pretty um, mint macaron ribbon. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut about six inches, and that's probably being very generous. And I'm going to leave that on the spool. And I'm going to put it, I'm kind of working cattywamp, y'all, because my camera is up here and it, it hides my face if I... Um, so I'm kind of working at a diagonal. I told you I was trying a new setup. And I think what I'm going to do is put a little stamp and seal right here just to give that an extra little um, hold. And then we're going to put this one over here. Not sure there's a wrong side or a right side for this. And then I'm going to just place this right on top. As far down, almost to the bottom of the front of the card. Make sure I got my ribbon kind of straight there. That was, that's the hardest part of the whole card. <laughs> when I was making my sample, have any of you ever done this? I forgot to put the ribbon underneath, so I had to pry it up and re, redo all of that. <laughs> I'm sure nobody has ever done that. I do it all the time. Now, if you wanted to, you could have just cut that off and, and had a little extra embellishment for another project, but I just um, I just folded it over the top. Now I'm going to tie my little knot up top. And I want to do a square knot. Now I wish I would have done a little bit longer than six inches, but this will work. This ribbon is a little bulky. It's kind of like a, a sweater. <laughs> I'm 
always trying to figure out how I want my, like I said, I wish I would have made that a little longer than six inches, but it's going to work. I just wanted a small knot at the top. And then I did it a square knot, right over left, left over right, and then you kind of end up with, you know, a neat little, little knot. Anybody in Girl Scouts, you learned how to make square knots or macrame? <laughs> I think I learned square knots in macrame, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's our ribbon, and then if you want, which I did on mine, but I had to kind of pry mine up as I told you. You can stick a couple um, mini glue dots under there just to give it a little bit of stain power. It's, it's not going to go anywhere, but oops, just keeps it a little flatter against the card front. Isn't that pretty? I just love those colors and all that gold foil. Okay, um, it's really a simple, simple card. We're gonna make a little tag as soon as I find my stuff. I've got a little piece of the mint macaron because it, it coordinates with this. And we are gonna use some soft suede. I wanted it to look kind of gold and I think soft suede looks kind of gold when you stamp it. Doesn't that look a little gold? I mean, it's soft suede, but it looks a little gold to me. <laughs> so whenever I want it to look a little gold, I guess a warmer brown, I use soft suede. And we can go ahead and do the inside of our card while we're at it. I just use the little Grateful, um, always Grateful. And then I use this little sprig. on the mint macaron. This little sprig would be really pretty with, um, did you guys hear a ding? I probably forgot to, there we go, <laughs> sorry. Um, it would be really pretty on a Christmas card too. And I'll try and get this right in the middle, straight. There we go. And that's all the stamping. We're not doing a whole lot of stamping today. Then I'm going to cut this um, little greenery flourish, or whatever it's called, with the smallest of these um, celebration label dies. And I'm also going to cut a one, same size, out of the brushed metallic um, gold. I'm using gold. There's a copper and a gold. The brushed metallic cardstock is what it's called. My brain just died there for a second. <laughs> and I went ahead and did that before we came on. So you didn't have to watch me and crank my machine and shake the table and everything else. So this is just a little trick that I like to do when I want my tag to stand out a little bit more. It's just to put something behind it and look like they're, you know, they're kind of swinging <laughs> together. But I'm going to use a Stampin' Dimensional. that I put on the wrong side, but that's okay. We'll make this one swing from this side. Just like that. And I'm gonna take a little, um, just a hole punch and punch a hole in the top and turn it into a tag. It's kind of in the middle there. And then I'm using this, um, 
Forever Greenery combo. It is just a gold thread, and I had a needle all um, because this little hole is hard to get this thread through, or I was having trouble getting the thread through. So I threaded a needle, a darning needle, and found it to be pretty easy to do it that way. So we'll see if I can do this here on live television. It's going to be a mess. I found that this gold thread has a tendency to really fray, and that's why I put it through the, um, the needle. And if you don't get all of the threads, there we go. I just keep a few needles around, darning needles, um, around my craft room. And I found with this, um, this particular ribbon, it came in handy because this ribbon seems to want to fray quite a bit. So I'm just tying this on to the bow that we made. I slipped it under the bow. And I'm just going to tie it in a knot. I used way too much ribbon, but that's okay. Then another thing I did was I just took another dimensional just to hold the tag down. I could leave it, but I went ahead and, and um, adhered it down to the card front. I made it look like it was kind of cattywamp. Hey, Michelle. Okay, and if you use this thread, like I said, it really has a tendency to unravel, so leave plenty um, up top is what I'm saying, <laughs> and you can kind of hide it behind your other ribbon, okay? And then I also took a little of that um, gold thread and made a bow for that little greenery. Which I put on upside down. Y'all, why didn't you stop me? <laughs> I put my tag on upside down. We're going to have to do it all over again. Here, we're going to pull this off. I'm discombobulated today. I'm telling you. I didn't take my vitamins. And that's going to drive me crazy with that being upside down. <laughs> it's supposed to hang down so we could put the bow at the top, not at the bottom. So let's, you get to see me die cut anyway today. I'm using the smallest one, the smallest die in that set. I'll try not to shake the table too bad. There we go. Okay. This is what you do when you mess up. <laughs> We're going to take a couple more dimensionals. And I'm just going to put them right on the ones we had. I'm going to kind of do this backwards. Okay. 
and I need to put a hole through this with my punch. Here it is. I'm going to determine where that needs to be. Probably about right there. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle again. That, one, that time went a lot easier. There we go. Okay. Put a little cattywamp. I'm going to add one more little knot in there. There we go. Okay. Now that we have it right side up, or upside down, we can add our little bow. And I just use some liquid glue. It takes a little longer to dry, but since this is such a fine little thread, I didn't want to use a, a glue dot. And then we can just tuck the inside. This is a four and a four and a fourth, four and a half by four and a half. It's a fourth of an inch smaller than the card base. My hands are all gluey. Okay, that's the card. Now then I went ahead and made a matching envelope. And I think I've showed you guys before how I do that. But I just cut out a scrap so I could show you again. <laughs> I just took my flap and determined about how much I needed and just cut out a scrap of that paper. And then I'm gonna take some liquid glue You could trace around it, which I've done that, and I think that's how I showed you the time before, a long while ago. Or you can just cut around it. And you have this nice, pretty, um, embellished envelope. I would probably use my trimmer because I can cut a straighter line with my trimmer. But for your sakes, I'm just gonna use my scissors. And there it is, isn't that cute? And when whoever gets the card has the matching envelope. It's kind of a surprise within the prize, a prize within the prize. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you so much for stopping in. Um, appreciate it. Uh, I will be back Monday with Make It Monday, and I have a special 
fun project that I'm going to use something from the Dollar Tree. So make sure you um, tune in on Monday or um, watch the replay. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.